What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be looking at more instructions within the Compute and Math subcategory and the two instructions that we're going to be learning about today is the multiplication and the division instructions. So these two instructions are uh, once again not very complicated from a mathematical standpoint but I'm going to be showing you a couple of very creative ways on how you can use them and showing you a couple of practical examples as well. So let's just dive into the demonstration. So in the first rung just like with the add instruction I have just a very very basic vanilla uh, set up. So here I have the multiplication instruction, which is essentially multiplying source A by a source B and storing that into the destination. So in source A, I have system then zero and source B, I have system then one, which uh, each one is equal to 250 respectively. And of course, 200 multiplied by 50 is equal to 10,000. This instruction is an output instruction, just like the add and the uh, subtract. So they execute continuously if there is no conditions uh, prior to them. And of course, if there are, they need to be true in order for the instruction to execute. The divide instruction, just like the multiply, is exactly the same. So here we're dividing a source A by source B. And I actually wanted to try to see what happens if we try to divide by a zero. Of course, you know that is not an, uh, not an allowed mathematical instruction. And as you can see, if you divide by zero, you're essentially just retaining the initial value. So there's no error thrown by this instruction on a PLC. This is not something that I've uh, done purposefully before. So I just wanted to double check what was going to happen. So that's just something that you need to keep in mind in case you are, uh, you know, relying on some kind of a feedback from the PLC to tell you that there is an error. So a thousand divided by uh, zero is giving you a thousand as the final answer. And of course, we all know in the mathematical world, that is not the case. Uh, let's move on to the example in this rung number two. So rung number two essentially features a conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, very simple uh, calculation, but what we're doing here is taking this float or a real uh, tag, multiplying that by 1.8, which gives us this 57.6 and store it in this system underscore real zero. So do uh, notice that we want to preserve that decimal point, which the only way to do so is to store this in a real tag. As you can see here, the element data type is real. Uh, this system underscore real zero is then added to 32, which is of course the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You multiply by 1.8 and you add it 32. And that gives us our final temperature Fahrenheit of 89.6. And of course, if I change this to any other value, so for example, 56 degrees Celsius, as you can see, it updates immediately. So that's going to be 132.8. Uh, with a uh, infinite decimal point after that, of course. And if we set this to zero, as you can see, it updates automatically as well. Uh, that being said, you can use this as your tag, for example, for an HMI like I have set up here. So I'm just moving this uh, temperature in Fahrenheit into this HMI tag, which is going to be used in a different section of the program. But that's something that we need to discuss in a later video. Let's move on to rung number three. So for this rung, I'm actually going to zoom out because there's quite a bit of logic in this rung. And the purpose of this rung uh, is to essentially calculate the average of five different values. So there is a an average uh, instruction which we're gonna be looking at a later tutorial, but what you can be asked in an interview is create a way to average five different values by using only the basic instructions. And this would be the uh, one of the approaches that you can take. So what happens here is we're essentially adding these system underscore dint seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, uh, and 11 into this system dint six. So all these add instructions go into the uh, into the destination of six, as you will notice by looking at the screen. And then this six, first of all, is divided by five through the use of the divide instruction, as we've discussed above. And this is stored in a real. So do notice that in order to preserve the decimal point, we do need to store in a real. If you store this in a uh, double integer, of course, you're truncating the value. And if you have any decimals left behind, then it's just going to cut them off. Uh, therefore, we do need to put our average in a real. And then, of course, at the end of this entire uh, contraption, what you're seeing is I'm resetting uh, the storage integer, the integer, which we've used to essentially aggregate all of our sum. 
and then I'm resetting this bit. So essentially, this is only executing once uh, for one single scan. This can be replaced by a one shot instruction if you would like, but uh, this does the job as well. So let's uh, put in some different numbers uh, 576, 6, 567, 896, 4000, and then 56, for example. And as you can see, this will only execute as soon as I trigger this instruction. I will control T it in and let's see what we got. So as you can see, this is the final answer. So 1332.4. And of course, if I re-execute this at any point in time, it just keeps uh, the same value in check. And uh, that's going to be uh, left as is. But I want it to be kind of, you know, I want it to be showing us when it actually finalizes therefore it actually uh, latches in the last value it has stored until you change all the values and then you re-execute the instruction once again so let's try that one more time re-execute that and that gives us 88,804.2 and that's pretty much the demonstration for the multiply and the divide so very simple instructions which are used for mathematical purposes of course you can scale things uh, you can also multiply. I've used this very frequently on PowerFlex drives. So for example, the output command frequency that you want the drive to run at is not going to be specified in Hertz. However, something visual uh, for the operator, for somebody who's running the line, uh, Hertz are usually the preferred method. So they would input a value in Hertz. Then you multiply that by a certain constant and you send that to the frequency drive in the background. So that allows you to essentially translate a... Uh, a, f a value which is perceivable by somebody operating the machine versus what the machine actually requires. So very, very useful instructions. And once again, you multiply source A by source B for the multiply and store that in the destination. You can use floats, you can use integers, double integers, and uh, in the divide, you, d you are dividing A by B and storing that into destination. And as we saw, there is no error thrown by this instruction. There is absolutely no way for, for it to do so. Um, but it does divide source A by source B and store that into destination, whatever you specify in there. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.